for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this hearing, and fr frankly, this entire investigation is nothing more than an attempt to limit a woman's right to choose under the false guise of illegal tissue sales. Um, and this isn't the first time we've seen this, as Ms. Clayton stated. 16 years ago, the House held a hearing on nearly identical allegations. Those claims, also based on secretly recorded videos by anti-choice extremists, were found to be fabricated and patently false. In fact, much of the so-called evidence that was used th that back then mirrors what we're seeing right here today. In that hearing, the majority relied upon a whistleblower who claimed the, that the entities were profiting from illegal tissue sales. However, while testifying, the whistleblower acknowledged that he had fabricated his statements and lacked any knowledge of illegal activity. The Department of Justice, though, still investigated the person in question, Dr. Miles Jones, and found that after a thorough review of the issues, no violations of federal statutes were found. So, Mr. Rabin, if the Justice Department had uncovered evidence that Dr. Jones um, had violated the federal laws on fetal tissue donation, the statute, in particular Section 289G2, would have permitted um, the Department of Justice to prosecute. Is that correct? Yes. And the majority appears to be saying that the term valuable consideration isn't fully defined. And as a result, the DOJ is incapable of forcing the law. Um, in your opinion, does the Department of Justice lack the clarity that they need to enforce the law? No. And if the department had actual evidence of federal violations in those cases, the DOJ would enforce the law, would it not? I, I have complete confidence that the men and women of the Department of Justice know what they're doing and take, take issues like this seriously, yes. Um, so is it fair to say then that there really isn't a problem um, with the statute in the 2000 um, case regarding the Miles Jones investigation, but rather a lack of facts to support the prosecution? That would be my inference, yes. And do you think we're in a similar situation from what you've seen yes. so far today? Yes. Um, so do you think it's possible that the lack of prosecutions that others have referred to over the years under both Republican and Democratic um, administrations signals that there aren't wi widespread violations of the law, as we've heard alleged here today? That's right. Um, so then once again, I think this hearing is really a, another recycled attempt to show um, wrongdoing when there is none or there's no evidence that there has been done. And we're once again watching history repeat itself. Um, you know, I'd also point out that after the investigation in 2000, women's health care providers were also subjected to false allegations, uh, or at false accusations on sever seven separate occasions between 2000 and 2013, all based on so-called evidence from anti-choice extremists. I don't know, Ms. Clayton, if you have any comments you want to make about those allegations that took place afterwards. I'd be glad to. The, the, um, the false allegations and the attempt to uh, stir up crazy people like Robert Deere have been on going. I think they've been ceaseless. In fact, anyone who saw Mark Crutcher talking at the Cleveland Right to Life last month um, saw him brag about stirring up people like the Leiden who will go out and do his business by any means necessary. How Crutcher has avoided prosecution, I don't know, but I think it's because he gets other people to lie for him. These efforts by the radical anti-choice groups like Life Dynamics, Army of God have been endless, as far as I can tell, and they threaten the lives of everyone who uses a, a clinic for, and the clinics, by the way, don't pro provide just abortions, they provide a host of health services. The people in, who were murdered in Colorado weren't getting abortions. It's just, it's a terrible threat to the health and safety of the nation when these people are allowed to get away with that. Um, you know, the majority seems determined to use this taxpayer-funded panel to continue pursuing the, the latest series of false unsubstantiated allegations, um, even though they've been debunk debunked by everyone who's looked at them, including um, state attorneys general, as well as committees right here in Congress. So the truth is that the investigation and this particular investigation isn't really about fact-finding at all. As, as we've talked about, we haven't had um, witnesses who can speak to the facts here. Um, so these are just baseless allegations made by Daniel Delayden, and it's just an, another attempt, I would say, to smear women's health care providers with falsehoods and fabrications. Um, women definitely deserve better. Um, I yield back, Madam Chair. I thank the gentlelady. Mr. Duffy, you're